to our local woodland just coming through the park with oops <coughs> and I found this wood mulch ready to go down which have these lovely examples of the sort of thing that we're looking for they've gone past their best um, but they're still uh, very attractive and apart from this bramble that's going across um, which I'm just going to sort of shove out the way I'm not going to destroy anything uh, even though it's a bramble and probably in the way of other things I'm just going to push that back out of the way and then we've got this lovely composition of this clump of reasonably okay mushrooms with quite decayed mushrooms in the background there. Um, so I'm going to try and set up a nice composition, that's what we want to start with, is it nicely composed. And then we'll get some baseline images of getting the whole thing nicely in focus, so doing a bit of focus stacking and getting different points of focus so the entire mushroom is uh, focused from front to back that I can put together in Photoshop later. I'm going to move this bramble and see if we can get a nice composition to start with. I think I want to be even lower than that. Let's see if I can get the tripod a bit lower. One of the things I love about these three-legged tripods is the ability to get down super low. So I'm pretty happy with this composition. So uh, what I'm going to do, sorry for all the grubby marks on the screen here, but what I'm going to do is start taking um, different focal shots of uh, particularly this little group here. So the whole thing is in focus. That will relate to down here as well. Quite happy for the background to be quite nicely blurred out. But I want a, a series of images at this exposure. So I'm going to go into manual mode, both on focus um, and, uh, and exposure now so that I can keep it nice and consistent so I should have a set of images that I can put together in Photoshop uh, when we get back to the studio. Yeah. things about natural history photography, nature photography, photography, is getting down with it, lying on the floor in a big pile of uh, bark mulch, looking at these beautiful mushrooms, which you just wouldn't normally be in this position to look at. Hopefully we've got enough shots that when we get back to the darkroom, digital darkroom, we can um, do a load of focus stacking and uh, bring all that, that light together to make them look like they're even more magical than they are right now. Although I have to say in real life, they're pretty cool. So I've got my images up in uh, Lightroom 
and um, if I just kind of like click through these you can see we've got all the different layers of uh, focus that we uh, shot in camera whoops that's a completely different one um, so what we're going to do is we're going to put these together in order to make our base image so I'm not actually going to do um, any editing to start with because uh, it can mess up the the blending in Photoshop so I'm going to highlight uh, all the different uh, shots that I want to turn into layers um, and then all I do is right click go to edit in and then we don't want to open it in Photoshop what we want to do is open it as layers in Photoshop and it will open each as a layer we click that and it will have a good old think about it and pop up in Photoshop momentarily so now I've got my layers um, into Photoshop the first thing I'm going to sing just in case there is a little bit of um, vibration on the tripod is do an auto align so I've got my layers down here highlighted all of those we're going to go up to edit and just have a look down for auto align layers I'm going to leave it on auto I find that generally does a pretty good job and we we'll let it have a think about it while we drink coffee and there we go so they're, they're all lined up and we can see there must have been a little bit of shake because there's a slight border around the image um, so that was well worth doing the next thing we're going to do is blend these layers together um, so that uh, all the different like planes if I switch some of these off you can see as I switch them off we've got different planes within the image um, that are in focus so what I want is all of those to be in focus at once just put them all back on so again with them all highlighted we go back to our edit option and this time just below low that we used before we've got auto blend layers and uh, what we want to do is check here that we're not yeah. panorama we want stacked images I'm going to keep these two checked um, those transparent errors that we've got around the edge it'll be interesting to see how good a job Photoshop does of filling those in with content aware filler we'll look at other parts of the image and see whether it can fill it in I'm not too fussed we can always crop it but it'll be um, good if it could fill in those blanks all we've got to do is press OK and again drink more coffee while it thinks about it. Ta -da! I never get bored of that really. That's some um, proper magic, isn't it? That the all those different aspects of the, the mushrooms are now lovely uh, in focus, maintaining the out of focus depth of field in the background and the foreground. Magic. And what's quite interesting if we look down on the right here um, is that each of our layers has a, a mask next to it next and we can see with the white and the black which bits it's masked out on each image which is really cool so i've saved that um, that should go back into lightroom hopefully hopefully that's the badger good so let's just check that i'm not hallucinating no that has got all the different aspects nicely in focus um, so this is our, our baseline image and what I'm going to do is uh, adjust the exposure again so I'm going to bring the overall exposure down and I want to do a bit of um, a bit of masking on this as well so um, I'm going to see if I can use the AI tools to do subjects like that straight like that and um, with the mushrooms themselves uh, they're obviously the the stars of the show so uh, I'm going to increase the texture a bit on those because those some lovely texture clarity just a tiny little bit but not too much um, and the uh, sharpness can go up just a little bit too much there just a little bit on that um, that's really good happy with that and then I'm going to create a new mask for the background which has done a pretty good job of of uh, everything but but I'm just going to use a brush just to exclude these bits I don't think it would be too mission critical actually but a bit OCD about it I want them as in focus as possible that would do um, and then I'm pretty much going to do the do the opposite with the background just reducing the texture reducing the clarity so we get more of a sort of ethereal 
type look and I might actually turn the dehaze down so we get a bit of a, a hazy look to it which uh, tends to essentially take the exposure up so I'm going to drop that down again to get it back to where I wanted it I'm not happy with that actually let's take that back up a bit I just want a bit of that effect but not too much yeah that would do absolutely fine um, and then I'm going to put a heavy vignette on the whole image as well good so there we have it a delightful finished image um, with all the elements of our subject nicely in focus having used that focus stacking technique there's loads of things you can do with this it doesn't have to be uh, um, a kind of fungi you could be looking at mosses you could be looking at rocks bark texture insects of course if they stay still long enough so you can have a lot of fun with this and probably the best thing about doing this kind of photography i think is getting out in nature rummaging around in the hedgerow trying on the flying wall and finding these these plastic subjects which many people just purchase by and making photographs out of them for those that you're interested part two and three uh, of this series in part two we're going to take this technique and then extend it on to get a bit more whimsical of using artificial light doing a bit of light painting um, having things like these uh, toadstools or, or mushrooms actually glow up um, and uh, and introducing uh, all that kind of stuff and then in part three um, we get even more uh, inventive and look at what else we can do in the digital darkroom including using AI tools um, to really make images so they're not going to be like hyper realistic at all um, we're just we're just drawing our visual voice and communicating stories a bit for amusement um, entertainment what, whatever else but if you're into nature and you're into natural history this technique of using focus stacking uh, is super useful and I'd encourage you to get down to a piece of woods um, or natural space anywhere near you and see what you can find have a lot of fun and let us know how you get on. Mm -hmm.